Welcome to Everlasting Love. My name's Patricia King, and we have a special guest with us today and a good friend, James Gall. It's wonderful to have you with us, James. We're going to talk about an exciting subject. Actually, you have a prophetic word on this one, Absolutely. and it's about awakening. That's and right. And we know that there's been awakenings in church history. That's right. The first great awakening, the second great awakening, and the Bible has lots to say about awakening. That's right. But you have a prophetic insight yes, on I it. Do. You know, it was... Um, not long ago, I was involved in 72 hours of nonstop worship and prayer. And we just did occasional teachings interlaced in with it. I was scheduled for the 70th hour. And at that 70th hour, the place was so saturated, I could not do the teaching. I had a great keyboard player. You give me a keyboard player and it unlocks this whole supernatural prophetic realm for me all the more. And so here it is, the weeping presence of God rolls into the auditorium. At least half of the people were weeping. I'm prophetically singing, I must burn, I must be a lamp for my generation. And in about half the way through this, my spiritual eyes were opened. And in the seer realm of the prophetic, I saw written out in front of my eyes, amber colored letters just like a banner. Actually, an angel came and unfurled a, like a scroll, opened it up, and I saw written out in front of me the beginning of the third great awakening. And a revival and an awakening are different. And as Patricia said here at the very opening, in North America and in other parts of the world, there was the first great awakening, the second great awakening. What I saw was the beginning of the third great awakening. But there's a couple of things that are distinctions between an awakening and only a revival. What are those things? I, I know that lots of our viewers would want to know the difference. Yeah, well, obviously, awakening starts with a revival because a revival is about restoring the church back to a revived place of its first love. But an awakening is more than that. An awakening is longer in length most revivals historically, the longest they've ever lasted is like around four years, and that's a long one. But an awakening, the first great awakening, lasted over a 30-year right. period of time. The second great awakening, when you study it, okay. went from 1790 to around 1840, yeah. went 50 years the entire generation in length, lived in awakening. You know, James, when I was studying out those awakenings, I, I, I started daydreaming yeah. for, for my grandchildren. That's I thought, it. oh, it would be so amazing to see a move of God that would capture them for their entire life. It's a sustained <laughs> move mm -hmm. of God. And so an awakening is a sustained move. It's longer in, le wow. in, le in length, excuse me. And But here's another distinction. It channels the empowered people into societal transformation. Think wow. about this. Out of the previous first and second great awakenings came women's suffrage, the women's right to right. vote. Came forth the changing in child labor laws. Yep. Mm -hmm. Came forth the birthing of hospitals. Yep. Came the end of, at that point in time, yep. of slavery. Right. The abolitionist movement right. was a part of the awakenings. And now we and have a modern day slavery that we're going after. That's it. In this awakening, In right? this awakening, because it isn't only about us being revived, mm -hmm. it is empowering and channeling the revived people into yeah. purpose. And all of them were involved in justice. It's it. Justice. Societal and it says, transformation. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of the throne. That's exactly right. And so this generation, in this third great awakening, I got a challenge for you, okay? You can't have a short timer's mindset. You got to have the view that we're going to pass this on to the next generation and the next generation if Jesus tarries. Have a long term mindset. Second, Get some targets of missions. Get mm -hmm. some targets of justice yep. and channel Come on. all of these people that get inflamed and empowered yeah. in supernatural life conferences yeah, and exactly. schools and training and channel them to change child soldiers and rescue them. Get behind that there will be not orphans, but children being a, an adoption yeah. movement. Right. Let's get behind 
this shifting of the change of the sex trade slavery yeah. industry mm -hmm. in this generation, yeah. we can change it. How? And we're going to. By a re revival that becomes sustained by empowering these believers into societal transformation. You know, James, probably along like with, with everything, Jesus said, my father's house is a house of prayer. That's right. That's and right. that I really believe that everything is birthed in prayer because we is. have the prophet, the priest, and the king, right? right? But but the priestly anointing that picks up on the prophetic, like you've prophesied this yes, great awakening. Absolutely. But we can't just hang around waiting for it. We That's have right. to have prayer and action. That's prayer you and You know, action. we want to continue to prophesy it, but we need prayer and action. That's right. And in Luke chapter 9, I love this portion That's of scripture. Um, and it's about the transfiguration yes. of, of, of Christ. And it says in, in verse 28, some eight days after these things, Jesus took along Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. Yes. And you know, in Second Chronicles 7, 14, it says that if my people will humble themselves and pray, right. seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and, and heal their what? land. What was the last thing? And will do what? Humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. And I will forgive their, their sins, sin and, and I will heal, heal their, their land. land. This is a time, not only for individual sins being forgiven, mm -hmm. But as a window of opportunity, the third great awakening is about healing the land. Yeah. This land needs healed. Every nation where people are viewing this, your nation needs healed. The land needs healed. And if we will do what First Chronicles 7.14 mm -hmm. says, we will get what God says. Mm -hmm. He'll forgive our sins. Right. He will cleanse us and he will heal the land. I that know. is an awakening. That's an awakening. And you know, it, it, it's so important to have that posture of prayer because in verse 29, yes. it says, while Jesus was praying, it was while he was yeah, praying, right. the appearance of his face became different yeah. and his clothing became white and gleaming. He hadn't done anything yet. He was just uh -huh. praying. He was in that place of prayer. Uh -huh. And he, he totally the glory came and manifest. And it says, behold, two men were talking with him. And they were Moses and Elijah. That's a very profound portion yes, of the scripture that we won't unpack too much right now. Who appearing in <laughs> glory were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, verse 32 is enlightening. Because uh -huh. it says, in the midst of this prayer meeting, the reason why Jesus chose Peter, James, and John to go to the mountain with him mm -hmm. wasn't to have a picnic. Yeah. It was to pray. Absolutely. But it says, now Peter and his com companions had been overcome with sleep. Now yeah. here's Jesus yes. being transfigured, this amazing That's act right. of the glory. The great cloud of witnesses is yeah. appearing. It is. There is this heavenly communication That's going right. on. And his disciples were asleep in the midst of the prayer yeah, meeting. Right. And you know, it's so easy to do, yeah. James, because even in our ministry, we, we are big mm -hmm. believers of prayer. Intercession mm -hmm. is one of our foundation values of our ministry. And yet, the more we prayed, the more fruitful we became. Yes. But then the fruit started demanding attention. Yes. And so That's we right. left some of our prayer focus, yeah. not all of it, obviously, but some of our prayer focus yeah. and and, and, and passion yes. and started doing the stuff, doing mm -hmm. the implementation right. of the stuff. And so the Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, you've yep. got to get back to the foundation, yeah, yeah, get yeah. into that place of prayer. So we've restructured everything awesome. to realign that we, we have prayer before anything. And, and it's not just, oh, let's pray so we can get on with the work. Right. Prayer is the posture for awakening. Absolutely. So it says, now Peter and his companions had been overcome with sleep. So they missed the whole thing. That's right. But, but <laughs> when they were fully awake, this yes. is awakening. When they were fully awake, they saw his glory yes. and the two men standing with him. And it was like, wow, their eyes were open. That's right. Awakening will open the eyes of a whole nation That's absolutely to see right. the glory of God. I mean, Isaiah 66 says, can a nation be born in a day? Yeah. And the answer is, yes, oh, yes I yes. am Psalm 2, that the nations are his inheritance. I am looking for whole cities and whole nations to be awakened. In John 11, verse 11, this he said, 
And after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go, that I may awaken him out of sleep. Some of you are watching right now. You feel like you're in a spiritual slumber. And we just speak together in agreement. We speak, let a spiritual awakening come to your heart. May you have an awakened heart. Yeah. I speak like Holy Spirit jumper cables yeah, goes on. from this set right now into your living room or your dorm room, into your computer, and, but it goes to your heart. And I speak as Jesus spoke to Lazarus, and I say, awaken out of your sleep for such a time as this. <laughs> and you know what? Lazarus wasn't just having a snooze. No, he was dead. He was gone. And even, you know, even if you feel dead, gone. spiritually yes. dead, not one little bit left in you that feels alive, you're about ready to be awakened. We'll be right back. Become a Breaker Team Partner today. Go online to xpministries.com. God, the creator of the universe, desires relationship with you. He wants you to experience Him. Join Patricia King and the XP team this coming Sunday for Experience. Experience is a powerful and impacting night of worship and the Word in an atmosphere charged with the presence of the Lord. Patricia hosts experience events on the second Sunday of every month. Bring a friend or two with you and we'll see you there. For more information, go to xpministries.com. Spiritual revolution will transform your life. Discover the reality of the supernatural and help establish God's plan for the earth. Learn to operate with Holy Spirit in supernatural realms with spiritual revolution. Available now at xpministries.com. James, you know the uh, two books that we've featured, The Spiritual Revolution and... A Call to Elijah's Revolution. Are books that we have written right. for this time. That's because right. they're prophetic books, prophetic words. And um, I know that the Lord has, has, has shown me very clearly about a generation that is being raised up. In fact, we're in a day that is absolutely critical that the body of Christ awakens absolutely. to the supernatural dimensions That's of the right. kingdom of God mm -hmm. because of what's coming. And right. there is a generation even right now that is so spiritually hungry, That's right. but they're going after the wrong the spirits, wrong not thing. after the spirit That's of right. truth, That's right. not after Jesus, the King of Kings and the That's Lord right. of Lords, but after other elements, right. other you know, mm -hmm. stuff that's out there. Right. And we, the church, must yes. rise up in this hour. We have to fill that vacuum because yeah. there's an enormous vacuum that's there. And uh, you and I have both ministered at like New Age fairs and mm -hmm. things like that. And one of the things that I noticed that a lot of the people that are there are ex-church people. And the reason they're right. there was because they didn't experience the supernatural right. power of God in the church. Right. Now, but there is a shift and a change that's happening right. because when we become awakened, one of the things that we are awakened to is expectancy right. to the supernatural. So I'm going to tell you a dream. I was um, in another state uh, ministering and I was just asleep. And I, was, I pray every night that the Lord speaks to me in dreams and visions and however he wants to. So in this dream, there were two hands that appeared to me. And this was sort of like, if you've seen the Matrix movies, it was like that, where you have a red and a blue or green pill and you have to choose. Well, it was like that, and, and I'm actually praying in the spirit in the dream, and I am told I have to choose. And I'm going like, I'm asking the Holy Spirit for help that I'll choose correctly. And I go, uh, uh, I choose right, the right hand. And in the dream, the right hand turns over, the fist opens up, and inside the hand, there was a white pill. 
I bring my, the right hand right up to my mouth, and right when I bring it right up here, my eye looks on the white pill, and there was a word written on the white pill. Would you like to know <laughs> what I saw written? What did you see, James? <laughs> <laughs> I brought it right up. I ate the pill, and as I brought it to my mouth, I saw the word, and it said, awake. I eat the pill called awake. And that moment, I wake up out of the dream. The room was filled with the tangible, manifested wow. presence of destiny, wow. and I knew I had an appointment in the coming awakening. Wow, awesome. And, and I believe we can all have it. We're all called That's right. to actually birth it. That's you know, right. We can birth this. But listen to this. It was important how I chose and what I chose. Right. I could have chose the left. I chose the right hand. We must choose him who sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Come on. We must choose right and we must choose righteousness, yes. the right hand. And when you choose correctly the right hand, you choose right, you choose righteousness, and you eat the pill of purity, you eat this pill, it will bring an awakening into your body. And I plead to pastors and leaders, it can bring an awakening to your church, but this is about, again, a great the third great awakening. Wow. And you know, the third great awakening is going to impact the entire world. Absolutely. It's not going to be just confined to one area. No, that's right. Because with media today, that's right. things can spread so rapidly. So I'm excited about the third great awakening. I'm looking for the day when, when the glory of the Lord, just like Isaiah that's 60 exactly. prophesied, is that, you know, it's just going to spread all over the world. I'm going to read it. Isaiah okay. 61, <laughs> arise, shine. For your light has come, come. Mm -hmm. and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness covers the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But now listen to this. But the Lord will rise. He will ascend upon you, and his glory will appear upon you, and nations will come to the brightness of its shining. Wherever you're watching us right now, I don't care whether you're in South America, North America, Asia, Eurasia, the Middle East, Africa, wherever you're at, Antarctica, Arctica. I don't care. Canada, the Caribbean, the islands of the sea, the Pacific Rim. I say to you, God this time doesn't have in his mind just a certain city or one nation awakening. This is the time for the greatest global awakening that the planet has ever seen, all centered around the man, Christ Jesus. Now, you have released the prophetic word on awakening, so we believe that word. It yes. says, believe the prophets and succeed. And you'll succeed. And so we're going to believe Amen. that word. We're going to get vision for that, of it spreading That's all right. around the world. I just believe it, and through media it will. Yes. You know, once it starts in one place, it'll go virally Absolutely. all throughout the nations. But I want to focus still on this whole aspect of birthing through prayer yeah, because good. there is not a revival in history that was not birthed through prayer. That's right. And I, I, I really believe that if, if we could just rally the mm -hmm. church together, yeah. rally believers together yeah. to cry out to God and do what he said right. for us to do in Second Chronicles 7.14, right. that it is an actual given. It's impossible it for us not to have the awakening. Sure. And you know, even in your families, even in your household, amongst your friends, gather together the intercessors because there can be an awakening that starts in your house and spreads all throughout the nations. You know, um, uh, the Welsh revival yes. right. was a revival that impacted mm -hmm. the world and still is. The testimonies still does. of right. that revival is still empowering mm -hmm. people today. But it it was birthed through prayer, uh -huh. just through the prayer of young people. That's right, it was young in people. In particular, they would get together That's and right. like Evan Roberts, right. he, he, he never wanted to miss a prayer meeting. That's right. He was at prayer meetings every single That's night. Right. He started he, when he was 13 and years he, old. And prayed, prayed, prayed. prayed. for 13 yeah. years at the age of 26, was in Northern Wales, 
attending a Bible school then, and it was Seth Joshua, the evangelist, and they're in a chapel meeting, and Seth Joshua releases a prayer that was the arrow that pierced right. Evan Roberts, and he said, bend the church to save the world. And Evan Roberts felt like he was a volcano that was about to erupt, goes to his instructors, asked permission that he could leave his Bible school, gets on a train, goes to Southern Wales, starts a prayer revival. It was a worship prayer revival. It wasn't even a preaching revival. It was a prayer and worship revival held in Mariah Chapel. I've been there on right. site. And the first person that got saved was his brother. Come on. And it just spread like a fire. It did. Spread like a fire. Because it's almost like, you know, creating a tipping point. Like That's your right. prayers, they just keep filling and filling. You pray for years and years and years, not right. seeing the manifestation. That's right. And then all of a sudden, every single prayer with interest uh -huh. is poured out for years That's and years right. and years. All the answers to those prayers. That's right. And, you know, we're just going to keep pressing in for it because it's on its way. Yeah, absolutely. And there was another great outpouring. And it was in the Hebrides Islands, yes. 48, 1948 yep. to 52. But get this, it's the joining of the generations. Right. It was the two older old, women, yeah. 86 and 84 years old, Peggy and Christine Smith, who are praying out of the book of Isaiah, oh, that you would rend the heavens and, and come, come down, down, Isaiah 64. Yeah. And then, but when the Holy Spirit fell, he fell on seven teenage boys yeah. who were in a barn, and they were in prayer, and they would even stack hay up around them because they were praying in the cold. And when the Holy Spirit fell, he fell in a barn. Yeah. And it was the glory barn. Yeah. And the youth were praying, crying out to God that he would open up streams in the desert yeah. out of Isaiah also. Mm -hmm. And so it became a synergistic, multiple generations who were in prayer together yeah. and a radiation zone five miles in diameter, and when anyone would yeah. just walk into it, they would fall under the spirit of conviction yeah. of sin. And cry out for mercy. And cry out for mercy and be saved. God, we want this today. Come on. We want this and more today. Yes, Lord. And we want a sustained move of God. And we want to see societal transformation yes, in our day. And so we pray to the Lord of the harvest that you would send laborers into your field as you have done in the past, that you would do again. As Matthew Henry said, the first thing that God does when he attends a revival or awakening is he sets his people a praying. Wow, awesome. A great awakening is on its way. And that awakening can start with you right now. You know, when Peter, James, and, and John fell asleep, they were awakened. And when they were fully awake, they saw the glory. You are about ready to behold the glory like never before. Posture yourself before the Lord. Draw close to Him and ask Him to awaken you to the fullness of everything that He has for you. You're made for this hour. You were created for this day. God's looking for those who will spearhead revivals, awakenings, moves of His Spirit. I think that's you. We'll be right back after this message. Become a Breaker Team Partner today. Go online to xpministries.com. Spiritual revolution will transform your life. Discover the reality of the supernatural and help establish God's plan for the earth. Learn to operate with Holy Spirit in supernatural realms with spiritual revolution. Available now at xpministries.com. Extreme Decrees for Extreme Times is a collection of truths that will keep you strengthened in every season of your life. 
Go to our online store at xpministries.com to order Extreme Decrees for Extreme Times today. You know, you can be awakened. This isn't just a special dream that I received about my life, though it has impacted my life. This is an equal opportunity God. And as we recited some of these examples, there was about family salvations. The first person to get saved was Evan Roberts' brother. This is for you. It's for your household. It's for your family because we don't want just a revival awakening and it touches every place else. We need it to touch our own spheres of influence. So I take the dream, and I've also had an angelic visitation with an angel called awakening that's come to me. And so with a commission from the Lord, I release to you that your heart will be awakened for such a time as this and that Jesus would come to visit you, that you could come from out of your slumber and be awakened for such a time as this. Thanks so much for joining us on today's program. Remember this and spread this message around. God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. We'll see you next time. So I want to encourage you viewers out there right now. I want to give you a key to a God encounter, receiving the Lord's Supper, communion, Eucharist. You don't have to do it with an ordained priest in a church facility. Excuse me, I don't mean to offend anyone, but you can take of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ right in your own home. In fact, I've had seasons where I take it every day. I have a travel communion set I take with me often on the road. And there's someone out there right now, I'm gonna give you a key to your next God encounter in healing. It's the meal that heals. It's partaking not in a fantasy, but in a reality. Not just in a memorial, but in a living presence reality. Receive the communion of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and take it in faith and obedience and the real presence of God is going to come upon you and there's going to be a healing release, a healing encounter coming to your life through taking of the Lord's Supper and do this in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ who is your God encounter 